Mailbag Monday again. My favorite day of the week. Let's get into it, shall we? Now, the astute among you may have noticed that I'm not drinking beer today. And the Canadian among you may have already figured out that this is, in fact, a Caesar. Now, I'm being lazy and just using the canned one because I had some left over from my vacation trip. But uh, nonetheless, uh, Americans will probably think that this is a Bloody Mary. It's close, but not quite. Um, the difference is there's a little bit of uh, clam in the tomato. Uh, so it's actually clamato juice instead of tomato juice. But the rest of it is uh, some Worcester sauce, some Tabasco, and the critical rimming with a celery salt. I don't have any celery for the traditional garnish, but whatever. It's a yummy summertime thing and almost unknown outside Canada's borders. Uh, so, uh, after that digression, first item is one connector. Fairly big one if it is in fact a connector. I can't imagine that it actually is though. What? Going harder. There. Okay. Um, it's a handle and some surgical blades. Oh, okay. Is that an actual scalpel? Hmm. Maybe it is. Almost need a knife to get into this thing. So, if it is what I think it is, then it is actually a surgical style scalpel. Let me get in here. And I want to be a little bit careful in opening it if it is a scalpel because, you know, they're sharp enough to cut you. Yeah, that's what it looks like, all right. Get in a little bit closer here. So the X-Acto knife that I'm used to using, it has a sort of a screw clutch on it that clamps down and clamps onto the blade like that. And uh, grips them nice and tightly. Uh, these scalpels use a different system, which I'm unfamiliar with. Okay, so it's kind of you see that little slot there that slides up into that narrow part and it walks down like that. Sort of walks down anyway. Okay. Let's, uh, let's see how well it cuts its own package. Oh, wow. I am not putting, mm, not putting too much pressure on that and it's slicing through fairly cleanly. Okay. Compare that to this blade, which uh, I had to push a fair bit harder. And I noticed that also the blade is thicker. I mean thinner. A little bit thinner anyway. So the exacto blade looks like it's about 21 thousandths of an inch. And the surgical blade looks like it's about 15 thousandths of an inch. Wonder if the steel is any good and if it'll hold its edge. Time will tell. But I think I will use that for the rest of this video. Meanwhile, let's check the listing. How much did I pay for that? Ten pieces. Number 11, carbon steel, surgical blade, scalpel PCB, circuit board, plus three number handle, number three handle. I didn't get it from this guy. I got it at auction from C. TJ Bling 4 who doesn't sell anything like that anymore. I paid a dollar 34 at auction. Currently this guy's about the cheapest I could find buck 53. However, I will uh link to a listing of them and or the search listing and there's a bunch of them. Anyway, there's not a whole bunch to say about them uh made of CR6 uh, and quality carbon steel with anti-rust paper and aluminum box packaging. Mine didn't have an aluminum box. Um, applicable to, you know, don't use it for medical purposes, use it for all kinds of other stuff. Fine, I'm going to use it for package opening and modeling. That'd probably be better if it had some ice in it, but I was also being lazy. 
Anyway, the next thing in says adhesive tape. Oh, wow, that does cut so much nicer. Ah, it's kept on tape or a reasonable facsimile thereof. And this is wider. I've already got some. You've probably seen me use it in various projects before. The one that I've already had for a while is one centimeter across. This one's two centimeters across. So basically just got this one partly because I've been using it a lot and partly just for a wider one because it's got better coverage, obviously. You use less of it if you're wrapping something big. So that's all that is. 100 feet capped on tape adhesive, high temperature, heat resistant polyamide, polyamide, something, uh, 20 millimeter W87. I got this at auction for a buck 70 uh, from someone called Warehouse 87. Free shipping, of course. So the, the benefit of capped on tape is, well, two or three different things. It's electrically insulating. It is, in fact, very heat resistant at high temperatures. And it's really quite thin and strong. I guess that's four things. Much to say about down here. Yeah, so long-term uh, temperature resistance 260 degrees Celsius, short-term 300 degrees Celsius. So that's like soldering temperatures. Um, and this one is 30 meters or 100 feet-ish long. So the actual material, polyamide, poly, polyimide, something like that, I'm sure somebody who speaks chemistry will correct my pronunciation down in the comments. Um, so it's a polymer of uh, imide mon monomers. I'm not a chemist at all. Uh, polymides have been in mass production since 1955. And the classic is Kapton, which is in fact what this is. Oh wow. Uh, stability down to minus 269 and up to plus 400. I hadn't even considered the low temperature uh, characteristics of it. Wow. Oh, there's something else that I wasn't aware of. It's also not really affected by a lot of uh, solvents and oils, hydrocarbons, alcohols, um, weak acids. Oh, you can use it as a photoresist. Oh, that could be handy if I'm doing uh, circuit board etching. What is next here? Expansion board module. Always a popular choice. Ah, that's interesting. What are you? Comes with a couple of rows of sets of dual row headers. Mega 2560 Pro. Wow. Can we read that? 2560, that's the chip on the AT Mega board. Hang on. Sorry, not the AT Mega board, the Mega 20. Yeah, the uh, Arduino Mega. Oh, neat. And this is in a much smaller form factor. What have we got for pinout? I think it's got, hmm. So on, on this guy, the left-hand side, it's got the same form factor as the standard Uno. And then it's got all these extra pins over here. This unit is much, much smaller. Actually, same width and one, two, about a third of the size. But it looks like it's got almost all the same pins on it. I haven't gone through and counted them. Yeah, that looks like it's got most of the same pins on it. Up to analog 15, up to digital 33. No, up to digital 48. And a few other things going on here. That guy has no label on him at all. I'm going to assume that he's the USB interface. And just from the form factor, I'm going to guess that it's a CH340. We have a 3.3 volt regulator there and a 5 volt regulator there. Okay. Reset button, USB input. 12 meg chip, or 12 meg crystal on a 16 meg crystal oh and that matches this guy pretty closely so that that should be interesting to play with should be drop in compatible any place that you could use this you could use this only in a form factor even smaller than an uno USB CH340G AT Mega 2560 16AU Proto Shield V3 Mega 2560 Pro Board 
Ah, Pro Breadboard for Arduino. Got this one from DIY Box. Currently selling for 1009 Canadian. I paid 1020 for it back uh, when I purchased it, but that's not too bad. And there wasn't any any uh, shipping on it when I bought it. Maybe well similar, maybe a little bit less than the uh, than the full mega. I realize that these are sponsored prices, so that you could get a little bit cheaper one maybe. But the form factor is what intrigued me. Compatible with Mega Arduino Mega 2560, just smaller, uh, built-in CH340 UART, yeah. 38 by 55 millimeters. So just as a refresher, the Uno has 6 analog, 14 digital, 6 PWM, uh, 32K of flash. The Mega has 16 analog, 54 digital I.O., 15 of them PWM, and 256K of flash. So that's what you get um, by by using that board, and that's why you'd use that one instead of an Uno. It's got just oodles of I.O., and you can put a much larger program into it. Next thing in says LED lamp. Just the gentlest of slice. Oh, maybe I do have to be not quite so cavalier. That is not an LED lamp. That is a wire. Okay, the one thing I don't like about this is the flat handle. It's hard to pick up. And being so sharp, you don't really want to grab it by the pointy bit. So that is four conductor cable. Um, good for extending RGB LED strips, probably, which would explain the color code uh black uh red blue green or g yeah so that's probably what it was intended for obviously i'm going to use it for whatever i need uh four conductor wire for but uh always good to have a, a variety of wire types in stock two meter four pin line extension wire cable cord for rgb led strip random numbers i got this one from mall star who's not currently selling it but has a similar five pin or five wire version i got the one that i bought at auction for 40 whole canadian cents with free shipping anyway there's not much to say about it it's just wire and the last thing in says led light and that is really fully packed in there so I'm going to be a little bit careful, especially with this sharp knife. I didn't do any damage. Oh, I've been waiting for these. <laughs> That's cool. So these are WS2811 chip with RGB LED in a weather-resistant um, kind of a form factor here let me just get the so that is it's a nice long strip of them can you say christmas lights except for that they're controllable and addressable so you got at this end we've got the power data and ground on the connector and also a separate power and ground um so that you can just plug that in to your your project or whatever and pick up separate power um which is the inside i'm thinking that the mail plug probably should be the input side which means that these two wires can be used to add extra power at the far end or inject power at the far end of it because i'm like that's going to be about 50 of them and there's one, two, three inches between them. Well, if you call it 10 centimeters, 50, that'll be five meters approximately, right? Cool. I'm going to go and check on the listing. And then obviously I'm going to power these guys up. 50 pieces, WS2811 RGB full color, 12 millimeter pixels, digital addressable LED string, DC five volts. I got these from Pan Pan Supermarket and I got them at auction for $10.65 Canadian. 
Um, this is the best price I can currently find from them is fourteen forty five Canadian or ten eighty eight American. But there's lots of other sellers have these things. So working current sixty milliamps, uh, 0.3 watts per LED, uh, minus forty to plus sixty, uh, IP sixty eight which is the weather resistance rating, and I don't have all these IP ratings memorized. There's a whole Wikipedia article. 68, uh, first digit 6, dust tight. 8, immersion to 1 meter. Dimension 12 millimeter, mean time between failures, whatever, viewing in 90 degrees, yeah. Outdoor lighting, Christmas decorations, ding, 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 ding. So uh, rather than uh, running these off an Arduino like I normally would, I'm just going to use this cheap little uh, controller that I got in the mailbag a long time ago. I don't even remember when I got it. And so I was uh, slightly mistaken. It looks like the uh, female end is the input side, which is interesting, but whatever. So I'll plug that guy in there. And I think I'm just going to let it take power from here for now. And so keep those far enough apart and just power it from a 5 volt 2 amp wall wart that I got a bunch of for a good price because of course you got to keep your eyes open for this stuff so what happens we have power when the blues go on it looks kind of weird and flickery though so I think I'll add some extra power at the far end just from this guy here, which I got set for five volts, and I'll crank up the current a little bit. About 600 milliamps or so. Power that on, and there. Now it's drawing, depending on what colors are going on, between 100 and 200 milliamps out of there. And you notice the blue, when the blue is uh, drawing, it's not uh, sucking it down quite as badly. But isn't that cool? That's going to look interesting as uh, as some sort of Christmas lighting. Now then, I wonder if I have time to get a few more strings of these. Because this is, like I said, this is about 5 meters worth, give or take. Um, and to do what I might want to do, I'd probably want to get a lot more. Anyway, ha. <laughs> That should be a lot of fun. So here's today's mailbag items in all their glory. I had to leave those running. I just like them so much. Um, what I got for transport times or shipping times here. The LED strings took three weeks. The capped on tape took three weeks. This uh, Mega 20... I, I keep wanting to call it 2650. It's 2560. Mega 2560 Pro took uh, about six weeks to get here. This uh, four wire took about 30 days, and the scalpel took just under four weeks to get here. It is still quite stupidly sharp after opening all these packages. So that should be good uh, a good little modeling knife. And a little bit flexible, but I'm not going to want to, uh, I don't think it's going to displace my good old trusty Exactos, because I've got three or four of them already, and lots of blades for them. But I think for more precision cutting tasks, these might just do the job. Anyway, thanks for watching as always. Um, and as always, uh, please feel free to jump in in the comments and... Um, Correct my mistakes, uh, clarify anything, let me know if you've got experience with some of these things and what you've found, or even ask questions um, or answer questions that other people have. That's all good, and I really do appreciate it. And thanks to my Patreons, as always, for helping, uh, helping finance this silliness. I really do appreciate that. And as a slight reward for them throwing a buck or two in my tip jar, they get to see all my videos a few days early. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later.